Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's full length featured review, we'll be going over the brand new MSI GT76 Titan. The GT76 Titan is truly actually earning the title of Titan by being the king of the laptops on the market right now. This is going to be a full blown desktop replacement as it is using desktop parts. So this laptop is gonna come loaded with the i9-9900K desktop CPU, and we have the full-blown RTX 2080 as well that hasn't been reduced down to the Max-Q edition. So the challenge is gonna be handling all of that power in a small form factor, and we'll have to see how that holds up as we get further along in the review. So to get things started, we'll go ahead and start with the unboxing, and as you can see, it's a pretty plain box. Now everything will be shipped to you just like you see here, which is gonna be a double box technique. We'll have a plain cardboard box on the outside and then the actual product box on the inside. So that's an extra layer of protection and obscurity as well so that nobody knows you got a nice fancy laptop sitting at your doorstep. So it goes without saying, but the GT76 is not trying to fight for its spot within the thin and light laptop category where a lot of the laptops recently have been trying to go. This is gonna be going for top power and that means it requires a lot of power. So the very first box here is actually just our power supplies with an S because it's plural. We have two power supplies to be actually fully powering up this unit. So we've got the Y splitter, which is gonna be plugging into the laptop, and then the two individual power supplies are inside of the box. So here comes the close-up of one of the power supplies, so you can see the specs on it. And as for the power, the actual wattage is written on the unit as 230 watts. So of course you would double that to 460 watts of total power that can be supplied to the laptop. Now for the other part of the power supply, the actual cable that plugs it into the wall, that is always separate because it changes depending on your region. So of course this is the North America plug. A little bit of warranty information and pamphlets. And we're pretty much done with the smaller box. All right, now we get to go back into our treasure chest and get our laptop out. So as you can see, the laptop is very well protected. We have huge chunks of foam all over the outside edges. That's gonna keep it super safe while it's shipping so that it can't get bumped around or crushed. And then we have the plastic on top of it as well, which is gonna further protect you from any kind of scratches or heaven forbid, any kind of water. And so here we are. This is our very first look at the GT76 Titan. And as you can see, it is not unmanageable. It's definitely something you can still carry around and hold. And it is very similar to what gaming laptops used to be in the old days before they got super thin and light. So with the unboxing finished, we can actually get into some real life numbers here. And as you can see, our laptop weighs 9.3 pounds by itself. Now, of course, you're gonna to need to take the power supplies with you. And if you carry both the power supplies and the laptop, you're at 13.9 pounds. So just round that up to about 14 pounds you'll be carrying around. Now as for size, we've got quarters up here for a scale and an actual ruler. And you can see that the back edge goes up to about two inches on the highest points. And near the front, we're down a little bit closer to an inch and a half. Now it's time for us to go ahead and plumb everything in and power it on for the first time and take a look at our system. So here is a quick look at the system BIOS, a couple of the features in here. So what we're really showcasing here in the BIOS is the fact that this is a high-end desktop in disguise as a laptop. When it we have a keyboard and a screen, but of course, if you go into the BIOS here, you're gonna see the capability of overclocking your CPU, including changing the voltage, 
and the fact you can change your RAM timings. These are the things normally reserved for a high-end desktop gaming board that has the overclocking capacities built into it. So it's really nice to see, even though we have the desktop parts in this laptop, that they also gave us the desktop capacities in our BIOS. So now here we are with our unit powered on for the first time and we can take a nice close look at it. So as we zoom in, we'll see that nice matte black finish, a decent sized trackpad with individual left and right click buttons, which is always appreciated. We do have a, have a multicolored LED RGB backlit keyboard. And of course our standard affair advertisement badges. One of the features that really stands out is the fact that we have a full blown 144 Hertz refresh rate panel with a three millisecond response time. So while this laptop is great for production work, it is also going to be amazing for gaming with that really high refresh rate screen. So to really bring the image of a gaming laptop to the forefront, we went all the way around with the LEDs this time. So you can see that we have LEDs lighting up both the front and the back of the laptop. So we have plenty of lighting available. Now to really finish off that premium laptop package feel, just like how expensive cars have hood ornaments on them, that's kind of a hood ornament on our LCD lid here, which has been embossed and does not have any LED lighting, but instead just goes for a nice simple badge. Also, something else worth mentioning about the system, while it is a full-blown desktop replacement and it's got the larger form factor due to the equipment inside, it is thinner than the old GT75, so it has been improved in that regard. So talking about this laptop as a desktop replacement, let's go check out our connectivity. So starting over on the left hand side, we have some ventilation where the air is gonna come into the system for cooling. The unique power port where we're gonna plug in the dual power supplies off of the Y adapter. That's gonna give us the ability to charge and run off of mains power. The RJ45 for local network connectivity and that's made by Killer. The USB 3.1 type C port that does have Thunderbolt built into it two more USB 3.1 generation two ports, and then we have our two 3.5 millimeter audio connections, one for your microphone and one for your headphones, and the headphone out port should have digital SPDIF as well. So moving around over to our front hand side, we're not gonna have any connectivity, just our status LEDs. So you can see those are blinking away to let us know what's going on with our system activity. And that brings us over to the right hand side. So for the right hand side, our connectivity is going to start with a standard SD card reader in the front, followed by two USB 3.1 generation two ports. And then we have a second USB 3.1 type C port, followed by mini display port with version 1.2 and HDMI output 2.0. So that's capable of 4K. And then of course, we've got more ventilation for the system. So as you can see for connectivity, we're pretty much up to par. We have a lot of video connections and a lot of USB connections. The things you don't see anymore, there's just no more optical drives and there's no more VGA. And that's just current with the times. So those aren't really expected. So here goes the last 3D spin so that we can give you a good look at the system from all the different angles before we go and take a deeper system dive for the benchmarking section. Now what better place to start the system deep dive than the device manager where we can see what kind of hardware we have inside. Here we can see the full blown i9-9900K. This is like the king of the desktop CPUs and here it is inside of a laptop. And of course up top we saw we have the full blown NVIDIA RTX 2080. Now for the monitor, here's our panel ID so you can look that up for some specs. The important specs of course are right here. We have a resolution of 1920 by 1080p and a 144 hertz refresh rate with a three millisecond response time. One very minor thing to mention while we're here in this section is that this monitor is not NVIDIA G-Sync compatible. All right, so let's take a look at our keyboard area. Every single key is individually RGB backlit, so you can control all of these keys 
from within the software and tune them to anything you would like. Now, as part of our benchmarks, we want to know how loud our systems are. So right now we're just playing a YouTube video to simulate normal operation of a laptop uh, under heavy load. And we have our sound meter right next to the exhaust to get some readings. That way we can get some really accurate data and pull pretty much the worst case scenario as if you had your ear right up to the exhaust. So we do expect that the system will have a very robust cooling solution. Not really sure how loud it's going to get once we put it under full load. The other very important data for us to collect is our temperatures right now on the CPU and the GPU before we start loading it in the benchmarks to get kind of the ambient normal levels. Now in that regard, the CPU is currently averaging close to about 60 degrees Celsius across all the cores and our GPU is ice cold at only 36 degrees Celsius. To further process, our temperature benchmark here is a infrared camera and we're taking a look at the temperatures on the outside where your hands are going to be and just how the system itself is dispersing that heat. So it's pretty neat. It's almost like an x-ray. We can kind of see where the hot spots are from the cooling solution, pulling in the air and then exhausting that heat. So right now we're seeing some hot spots show up and a little bit of heat on our table. That'll look dramatically different once we put the system under load. So here we are kicking off the very first performance benchmark, and this is going to put the system under some load. So we'll go back to what we did before and take new readings with the system under load and see how much they have gone up. So the, the sound levels have definitely gone up. They're now in the mid 50s, which still isn't bad. And again, this is the worst case scenario. These readings by themselves are not super useful unless you go look at other laptop reviews that we've done and kind of compare and contrast the different systems. Now back to the infrared camera. Now the heat dispersion looks the same as far as the laptop's keyboard, palm rest, touchpad area, which is great. That means those are not heating up and your hands aren't gonna get uncomfortable. But what was expected here is that the heat coming out of the system, those temperatures are now higher. And of course those, those streaks across the table are much larger because there's more heat being thrown out at a further distance. All right, Firestrike has finished up. Here's a quick peek at some software, the system tuner, where you can do some CPU and GPU overclocking from software. And now our scores, 23,405 for Firestrike, which is an outstanding score. And let's go see how those temperatures went. Now our CPU, all the different core temperatures average out to about 90 degrees Celsius. And then down below, our GPU came to a maximum of 76 degrees Celsius. So what that translates to is the GPU stayed super cool, actually, and the CPU was well within spec. So our next benchmark is going to be Cinebench R15. So this benchmark is really good at showing off CPU scores. So this is going to be an outstanding score of 127 frames per second. And you can see down in the graph below that it's just towering over everything else it was compared to. So a big laptop needs big speakers and here's our sound test.
So this is the bottom of our laptop, and in most other reviews, that's just to show you something down here, like, for example, our subwoofer from Dyn Audio. But everyone else knows that when we show the bottom of the laptop, that means we're about to enter our disassembly portion of the review. You can see the huge ventilation area and all of those copper heat pipes for all of these desktop parts. This does have a full-blown four-fan cooling solution, so it's going to be really interesting to disassemble it and see how it was put together. So here's the number of screws that were removed. Really not too bad. And this will let us take the bottom cover off. And now as we zoom in, we can take a look around at some of these internal parts. So there's that subwoofer speaker. We see our internal battery. We have our M2 module here. That's one of our SSDs. Tons and tons of copper and cooling fans. Now this system has four RAM slots and they can hold 32 gigabyte modules. So it comes pre-populated with two of them filled for 64 gigabytes of RAM, but you can further expand that up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. Now we're gonna have to take the cooling solution off to see what's underneath. So there was a lot of small screws to remove and it let us get everything taken off. So we see we have very large cooling fans, tons of copper and heat blocks here. And this is gonna reveal down below our CPU and our GPU. So in this particular circumstance, they really did give you the system fully loaded like they did with the RAM using the maximum size modules. They also gave you the top of the line CPU and GPU. So there's nothing to upgrade to but the system does have the capacity to actually change them out. So you can give the system a different CPU if you needed to upgrade it or downgrade it. We have two different M2 modules there and there's room to expand that as well. And those can be put into standalone operation or in RAID. Now talking about the desktop CPU and how it can be changed out, here you go. It's the exact same socket, locking mechanism and everything that you'd find on a desktop board. So that is the i9-9900K sitting inside of a laptop. So as far as showing the disassembly, one of the major things is to show, is it worth taking the system open to get to anything inside? Is there anything you can upgrade? The answer is yes. There's actually SSD slots you can get to. You can change those out or add additional ones. You can add more RAM. You can change and upgrade the hard drive. I mean, there's things to get to here, but the system is so highly fully loaded when you get it. I'm not sure most people would have any reason to. One eternity, one e so the easy stuff's over and now we're going into a more detailed, deeper disassembly. And we've taken out the battery, the SSDs, just kind of going through and removing as many components as we possibly can. So here you can see this is the heat shield and cooling block that went around the GPU. The other one, the one that came off easy, was the one that was on the CPU. At this point we have a ton of screws everywhere and they are of different sizes. So this is definitely not recommended to disassemble the system to this point. But now we can take the inner frame off and that's going to give us the ability to actually get underneath to the other side of our motherboard. So here goes the big reveal as we flip over the motherboard. And it's a bit underwhelming. There's really not much here. We have the other two cooling fans and that's why it's a four fan cooling solution. And we see the other two RAM slots. Kudos to MSI for being nice enough to fill those two RAM slots with the largest RAM dims possible. So there's no reason to have to come here to either add RAM or upgrade the RAM. Now here we are at this point, we have finished our disassembly and that is the final portion of our review. So everything's coming to a close. Now I just wanna say thank you very much for tuning in today to watch this video and staying with us to the end. We hope that you enjoyed the review and found it both entertaining and educational. So whether you're looking at this laptop specifically or just researching things around the market and finding what's just right for you, 
We hope that the video was able to answer any questions you might have had about this model, or at least get you interested enough to look into it further. So the next step is to go down into the video description and look for the product page link and click on it so you can go down and look at all of the manufacturer's advertisements, the full system specs, and the current pricing and availability. Now, while we design these videos to be informative, of course they can't answer every single question every single time. So if you have some questions that you still wanna ask, go down into the comments section of the video and post a comment question and we can answer that question for you and everybody else. And of course, never forget we have one-on-one -on -one personalized service. So if you need that one-on-one -on -one service, feel free to contact us by phone or email. So with all of that said, we just wanna say again, thank you very much for tuning in today to watch our video. And we just wanna remind you, this was Gentech PC. And we'll see you next time.